Welcome back guys, I have another Ivanchuk game for you today. This is from round 8 of the Sunway Citrus Chess Festival. So Ivanchuk had white in this game, he faced the 20 year old Armenian Grandmaster, Manuel Petrosian. So Ivanchuk opened with e4, Petrosian responded with c6, the Karl Khan defense. d4 from Ivanchuk, d5, and here Ivanchuk played f3. This is not such a common move. More common is for white to play e5. Knight c3 is also pretty common, so is knight to d2. But here f3 was played. e6 from Petrosian, knight c3, and bishop to b4. Black wants to try and undermine white's control of the e4 pawn. So here bishop to f4 was played, knight to f6, adding more pressure. Queen to d3, so that makes room for castle's queen side. So note that bishop c3 can be played, this wins a pawn, but after a queen e3, knight back to f6, white wouldn't mind this as his development comes rapidly. For example, this, bishop d3, castles queen side, and black has a problematic bishop on c8. So here, after queen to d3, black played the move b6, white castled, so Ivanchuk is going for a very double-edged position. Black is most likely going to castle kingside, and this is probably what Ivanchuk wants, a good fighting game. So here bishop to a6, that trades off black's bad bishop. Queen e3, bishop takes f1, rook takes f1. Black castled, knight g to e2, and c5. A logical move which aims to open up lines against white's king. This is now a critical position for white, how should he respond? Here there are two moves for white which, makes, uh, which make a lot of sense. Black seems to have good pressure on white's central pawns, so maybe bishop to g5 pinning the knight, or maybe rook to d1 trying to overprotect d4. But here Ivanchuk shocked everyone and he played e takes d5, so giving up his strong center, and here knight takes d5, this only seems to have helped black. The knight now forks bishop and queen. So here if white were to play knight takes d5, then queen takes d5 gives black a very comfortable position. Now looking at a2, and if king b1, then c takes d4 and black is doing great. So here after knight takes c3, knight takes d5, Ivanchuk played queen to e4. Here, knight takes c3 is just asking to be played. I'm not sure why Petrosian didn't do this. This seems to give black quite a comfortable edge. White would have to struggle quite a bit in this position because of his shattered kingside pawns. And black can even try and go positional here and play moves like c4, knight of 6, knight d5, where his knight will be superior to the bishop. But here, after the move queen e4, Petrosian played knight to c6, which is also a fine move, nothing wrong with developing a piece. So here Ivanchuk took on c5, and Petrosian now took on c3. And this destroys Ivanchuk's queenside structure. So here, queen to f6 was played, that means queen takes c6 with queen takes f4. And also this looks at c3. So here, king to b2 played. We have b takes c5, this still looks dangerous but not as bad as the earlier scenario because black has some issues with this undefended knight. And it's a good thing that uh, white has his bishop on f4 because that covers b8. Ivanchuk played rook to b1, so here it seems tempting to play e5 trying to cut up this bishop, but note that in doing so you nullify the queen's influence on this diagonal. So here black played the move rook a to d8. The reason he did this is to discourage the white king from seeking refuge on the king side. And on b2 the king is pretty awkward having to watch over c3. And sometimes knight b4 could be an issue taking advantage of the pin on the pawn. Right now it doesn't threaten anything and white can meet that with bishop to e5 but knight b4 is just something to keep in mind. So here we have rook h to d1, Petrosian played the rook to d5, threatening to double on the d-file. 
So if white were to take the rook, this trades a lot of pieces off the board. But here black seems to have a small edge because of this, these weak pawns. Black will try and gobble up as many pawns as he can. His king is much safer compared to white's king. So a slight edge here for black. So after the move, rook to d5. Ivan Chuk played rook to d3. This is a good move. This prepares to meet rook after d8 with rook b to d1. And if black takes on d3, which was what Petrosian played, then c takes d3, undoubles white's pawns, and gives the king a shelter on c2. One interesting idea that Petrosian could have considered here is instead of taking on d3, he could have played c4. So the idea is that here black goes knight to e5, forking rook and queen, forcing uh, white to give up his bishop, which uh, controls this square. But this does simplify the position a lot. Here are only queen and rooks uh, for both sides. So queen takes h2, queen to d2, a similar position as I've shown earlier, but with the queen on d2, this protects. This holds everything together for white. But white will struggle to defend this because of his weak pawns. But here, rook d3 plate. Let's go back to the game. And knight to b4. So this takes advantage of the pin and threatens knight takes d3, also threatens queen takes f4. So black, uh, excuse me, white dropped the bishop back to d2. Rook to d8. So putting more pressure here, attacking d3. So Ivan should played d4. h6 was played to give the king a flight square. And here the ideal move for white to play would be a3 to kick away this knight. But Ivanchuk bravely grabs the knight with the c3 pawn, allowing rook takes d4 with some very dangerous discoveries. Here queen to a8 check was played, king h7, and king to c1. So if Ivanchuk can hang on to his extra piece, he should be doing well in this position. But black's attack is very dangerous here. Queen to g6 played by Petrojan, and this is actually the best move in the position. So now eyeing c2, so rook c4 is a big threat, and the queen is also eyeing g2. So here Ivanchuk played rook to b2. So here rook c4 is still very dangerous. King to d1. Queen takes g2, black must have something here with this king stuck in the center. Now it's threatening queen f1. So bishop c3, queen f1 check. King d2, note that queen to c2 loses quite quickly. Here rook c2 defending c3, but rook takes b4, followed by queen a6 mate. So let's go back, king d2. So here rook f4 threatening this. So queen f8 from white, threatening to give mate on g7. Therefore f6, queen takes c5. So here if rook takes f3, white can now escape. Now black is threatening, rook takes c3, so king back to b3. And here black has to settle for a perpetual with queen to d1. But here after queen takes c5, Black wins with rook to f5. Rook d5 check. And if king c2, then this queen to d1 is mate. So king to e3, white survives. There is no immediate mate, but white will suffer a lot in this position. I'm not going to show you in depth here, but I'll quickly show you a possible outcome. Something like this could happen in the game. Yeah, and here queen to e4, this threatens rook to e1, and there is no defense. Let's go back to the game. So after rook to b2, rook c4 is very dangerous. It's true that black has a lot to calculate in this position. But intuitively, this makes a lot of sense to try and keep the white king in the center of the board. But here Petrosian played queen takes g2. 
and this is a mistake, Ivanchuk now manages to consolidate his position in the next few moves. So now white's king has ample protection with these pieces surrounding the king, and it definitely helps to have a pass a pawn. Rook to f4 was played, a3, queen to h1, and here rook to f2 from Ivanchuk. A good move. So this trade helps to get rid of any dangers in the position. So black played e5, Ivanchuk took the rook, queen f5 check, king to g8. So Ivanchuk repeats moves for a bit, just to get closer to the time control. g5 played, queen e5, this is move 39, only one more move to make to reach the time control. And this is just going to be an easy technical win for Ivanchuk. Slowly but surely, this pawn will queen. I'm just going to play through the rest of the game without any commentary here. So here after this queen to e8 check, Emmanuel Petrojan resign, as there is no stopping white from queening the pawn. A very gutsy decision by Ivanchuk to grab the knight there. It was a big gamble and things could have been disastrous for him. But you know what they say, fortune favors the brave. So this win now puts Ivanchuk in tight for first place together with Dmitry Andrekin and Alonzo Rosell. So that is all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. Once again, if you like my videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.